what you know what Jeff just said too. Right? Just, I kind of like seeing it in every faction. We'll do. And then the RFILs and stuff can try to get flat. Who do you have in there now? I'm hoping to change them to gray. I'm just the driver. Uh, go ahead, please. Pearl Crew, Scott Reed, uh, Tony Paris, Brian Chi, Terry Kirby, Chris Kelly, and myself, Jim. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jazar. Morning. Your keyboard Hans and I'll turn my heading change I'm down to uh, guessing half that, of the week. Um, everything worked well with Bofin and that Kelly is there and that they're Program they're broadcasting now. Pause. Yeah, it's something that'll happen. Yeah. I'll give a call I'll over there to confirm it. Then. Roger, thank you. Stand by. Let's go. If we've got, if we have a left with the uh, acquisition, we can just stop and just see if different things have happened. Go for it. Okay, no so, good. Are you happy with this? You like this position Everything better? Is, Survey. Uh, the ROV pilot. Go along with that. Thank you. Jim. I I'm not quite sure where we were to cut set. open up and turn everything on around 6.30. Uh, roger that. Right before that. They might not be fired up yet. Okay, that's good. That's, good. that's yeah. good. So guys, we're going to pan roger. up to the periscope and uh, focus on it. Let's zoom in. So, Honolulu, while we're in this position yeah. and waiting uh, for media and for others, we're going to be just taking a look at different aspects of this. One of the questions, Terry, you guys can probably answer it, is orientation of the periscope. Will Lerner yesterday told Hans that just as they made the shot, uh, the scope was looking right at them. I remember uh, Will telling me that uh, as he was watching it go by, so they said that it looked like that periscope turned to look right at him just before they fired the shot. Um, we've gotten up pretty close um, to the to the periscope, um, but if there's so much uh, tangled line on top, it's really hard to tell which uh, direction it was was pointing. Roger. But um, with the camera you have. Right there, we might be able to get a real good idea of which direction that periscope is looking. Okay. Remember when we were looking in the hole, Terry, and whether the, I think the periscope handles were up. They were up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so they yeah. had like looked through it. They looked through, through it. Things up and those up and probably trying to dodge. So it may have turned that. the scope at that point, but but it may be looking back in the direction of the shell. But um, yeah, thinking of the periscope handles, I think yeah. they were up, pulled it up. 
and in a position where the Periscope would have been looking forward. Yeah, yeah no, that's my sense, too. I mean, having seen the pictures that you guys took. I think they may have turned their periscope and have seen a destroyer right next to them and probably uh, were trying to dive from that shell head. Yes. So, uh, I understand that Randy Sasaki has joined us from Japan. Ohayo gozaimasu, Randy. Thank you for being part of the dive. So, what we're looking at at this, uh, with the sail here, which covers the conning tower, is you've got the mount for the, uh, the periscope, which comes out. There's battery exhaust in this area. You also have what's left of some of the cable. This wire cable, this wire rope ran both fore and aft. You see a pulley uh, for the where the wire went forward. This was designed to help cut net, and uh, most of that cable has failed except that area where it is closer here to the periscope shears. As well, these submarines also had running lights. The forward light was blanked out. That's a feature of the Pearl Harbor attack submarines. The aft running light was not blanked out. Those of you Is wondering, it, uh, possible to zoom in on the top of the periscope. Pilots, can you zoom in on the top of the periscope, please? Popular, kind of facing forward and maybe a little to starboard. Yeah. There's that flat surface, Jim. It looks like it's forward and a little to starboard. I don't know if that's the ocular element or not. Right. Set around. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Uh, Thank uh, you, guys. Yeah. That's perfect. Hold for a while. That's yeah. Yeah. Well, here we are. Look at that. The galaxy. Yeah, galaxy. 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 It's just what a, a reminder. Incredible. It's just a reminder for everybody out there that oftentimes as we do our work and we find these wrecks at the bottom of the ocean, that indeed out of death comes life. And these wrecks now are, of course, the, the homes, the habitat of a variety of marine life. And here at the tip of that periscope, you see that very clearly. Thank you, pilots. Let's go down them now to the base of the periscope and the periscope shears, please. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. We just keep going down, nice and slow. That's fine. You're doing great.
Chris, this is pretty nice in terms of the colonization. Really giving us a good sense of it, I would imagine. Is that going to be yeah, fun? so um, a lot of these Stop. are a type of Nidarian. It's, um, it's a sort of, I guess you could think of it as sort of a coral. These are all polyps, but this thing does not create a, a hard structure like reef corals. Uh, it just forms a mat of these polyps that grow over hard surfaces like the, uh, like the periscope. So uh, a lot of these corals like to get off the bottom because they're susceptible to sedimentation. So if they find a structure like this, in they can settle out on it, but up off the bottom, then they can really thrive. And that seems to be what's happening here. Okay, guys, can we just back out a little bit and drop a little more? Thank you, Chris. Yeah, some of those uh, curly white structures there are worm tubes. So these are presumably uh, polypheat worms that are going to extend out, and they settle out also and are filtering the water just up on this raised part of the uh, submarine. It could also be, too, that there's a different, uh, more noble metal in the periscope shaft, and so it's not going through the same incrustation process as the hull, as the sail. Yeah, Maybe Roger that. covered with a uh, kind of uh, biofouling, so it remains nice and smooth. Yeah. And those little features like that. Absolutely. Well, here's a good shot. Here by the shears, you can see the, um, you see the holes in the metal there. This is the battery exhaust. You see that there to the left? Chris, what's this big spiky guy? So that's a sea urchin, and his official name is Stereosideris hawaiiensis, and um, he's probably feeding on uh, some of this maybe bacterial mat or maybe some of the, the, the cnidarians, the little coral-like structures uh, on the sail. Awesome. Thank you. So can we move to the right now to the pulley? Same altitude, the giraffe. 